Hello students, I hope all of you are keeping safe and well during this pandemic. Today, we will learn the other half of the subtopic from Unit 6 Sensational Poems. And with this video, we will come to an end for this particular unit. So let's get started. The subtopics for the second part of the unit will be firstly, assonance, second, punctuation give expressions, and lastly, we have shape poems. So let's get to each topic one by one. For the first subtopic, we have assonance. Assonance is the repetition of the vowel sounds A, E, I, O, U in nearby words. When it has the same vowel sound, we call it assonance. Vowels are the alphabets A, E, I, O, U. They help to create different sounds in words. All words contain at least one vowel and it can stand alone or blend with another vowel to make a new sound. For example, she seems to beam rays of sunshine with her eyes of green. Here you can see the underlined letters EE -E in seams and EA in beam. Then we have EE -E in the word green. Here you can see all of these vowels are blended with another vowel letter and it gives the vowel sound E. E, 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 A. These are different letters but the sound is still the same. Another example. I wish there was a way to make your stay. Here the underlined letters A, Y, A, Y gives you the vowel sound A. Here, there's an important point to remember that the letter Y is also considered as a vowel sound when it comes to assonance. In the following pair of words, we will identify the vowel sounds. C, flee. Here, the underlined vowels E, E and E, A gives the vowel sound E. Next, spoke, croak. Here the vowels underlined O and OA gives the vowel sound O. Play afraid. Here the underlying vowel letters AY and AI gives the vowel sound A. Tune balloon. Here the underlying vowel letters U and double O gives the vowel sound U from the vowel letter U. As you read out these vowel sounds, you will found that, find that it sounds similar to the vowels. It is important to remember to focus on the sound produced by the vowels and not focus only on the vowel letters. Next, we have the other subtopic. Punctuation gives expressions. Poets use punctuation in poems to create mood and expression for the readers. It is the tool which the poet used to talk to the readers and draw the attention to specific points, depending on where the punctuations are placed. Commas, apostrophes, exclamation and other marks affect a sentence messages. Now, let's have a look at this poem for further details. The poem is entitled Blast Off and this poem is basically about the start of a race before it starts. So let's read the poem. 10, 9, keeping time, 8, 7, aimed at heaven, 6, 5, we're still alive, 4, 3, what will we see, 2, 1, I'm holding on. Down to zero. Here we go. So now, this is basically about the start of a race or uh, the particular group of people going for a trip and they're excited as to what to find out. Here, the ellipsis, that is the three full stop, helps to show that there is a long pause which adds 
to the tension. Here the poet wants to create the tension. The speech marks, that is the inverted commas, shows that someone else is speaking as well as the narrator. The question mark shows that they are wondering about the trip. What will happen in the trip? What are they going to experience? So that let us know that the people are curious. Full stop. It shows that the countdown is over. And the exclamation mark that is used at the end shows us that the narrator is excited or surprised because the countdown is over and now they have to start their race or their particular trip. So this is how the poet makes use of the different punctuations in order to create the um, environment in the poem, in order for us to understand whether there is a there is there is a very suspense environment, it is a happy environment, or is it something that is very exciting? So this is how poet gives out expression throughout their poems by making use of punctuations. Let's look at another example of a poem entitled Fall Short by Edwin Howey. This is also another example where punctuations are being used by the poet to give expressions. The scenario here is the players are in the middle of a game of basketball. The scores are even. A fall is awarded and a player is given an opportunity to shoot the ball towards the net. So now let's read the poem and find out. The ball slides up and out, lands, leans, wobbles, wavers, hesitates, exasperates, plays it coy until every face begs with unsounding screams, and then, and then, and then, right before roar up, drives down and through. The punctuation used in this particular poem shows where to use expression and pose to create mood since it is describing about a very competitive basketball match. The commas used in the poem creates a sense of suspense, like after the lines slides up and out, lands, leans, wobbles, wavers, hesitates, exasperates. See, all of the commas used after this line create, is creating suspense. The phrase, and then, and then, and then, that was repeated twice, creates suspense and anticipation as to, okay, what's going to happen now? What's going to happen next? Is it going to go in? Okay, so that's how the suspense is being created. The words in capital letters, Roar up should be shouted out loudly with great joy in order to create a joyful expression. The mood of the poet, the poem, moves from anticipation, that is towards the beginning of the poem, then it goes towards suspense and expectation, that is towards the middle of the poem, and by the end of the poem, it is full of joy and jubilation. That is a that means that the ball went in and they've scored a point. So with these examples we understand that this is how punctuations are used by poet in order to give expressions and to create an environment along with their writings for the readers. Moving on to the next subtopic, shape poems. What are shape poems? Words and poems can be written in the form of a shape or picture. Shape poem is a poem that is shaped like the thing it describes. The shape adds meaning to the poem. You can write the poem inside the outline of the thing you have drawn or you could write a short poem and make the words the outline of the thing. For example, here in the left side, we have a shape poem of a cupcake. 
and here it is drawn on the outline of the cupcake that is drawn. So now let's read the poem and see what we have here. I am craving creamy cupcakes with cherry top and sugary sparkly sprinkles on top. Tasty treats are delicious to eat. These sweets fill my belly and put a smile on my face. I could eat one every day. Yum! So now you see how it is written on the outline and it is forming the shape of the cupcake. Right? Then on the right side, we can see how the particular poem is written in the shape of whatever the person is writing the poem about. Okay? The, uh, the words is making the outline of the particular thing. So here, what does it look like? This is a drawing of a baby. So now, the words of the poem is forming the shape of a baby. So now let's read the poem. I'm about to have a baby sister. I can't wait to kiss her. Daddy wants to name her Jean. That only makes mom mourn. If it were me, I'd name her Celeste. Because for my little sister, she will only have the best. Now see, as the person, whoever is writing this, has written in such a way that it is forming the shape of a baby. So now you can see how shape poems you can write in two ways. One, write in the outline of the particular shape of what you have drawn. Or either write a short poem and make the poem in the shape of the concept of your poem. Now let's look at another example of a shape poem which is from your textbook entitled Careful When You Pour by Paul Cookson. So now, in this poem, you can see how a cup is being filled by a jar. So now we have to read this poem from the bottom. Not from the top to the bottom, but from the bottom to the top. So now let's read the poem. Gurgle, gurgle, splish, splash, do not spill a drop. Liberate the carbonated, fizzy, wheezy pop. Pour me very gently, right up to the top. Blink, blink, hiss, hiss. It, is it time to stop? Bubble, bubble for trouble. Bubble, bubble for trouble. Bubble, bubble for trouble. And now you can see how it's being poured with the sound, with the letter P, 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 P that's been written all over, like as if it is overflowing. In the poem, careful when you pour, you can notice that it is shaped like the thing it describes. That is, a glass is being filled with the help of a jar. The poet has not used any full stops or commas between words. This shows the continuous pouring action in the poem. In the previous poems, you could see how commas were used, ellipses were used, right? In order to create suspense, like something they are waiting for. But here, none of the punctuations are used because here the poet is trying to express the Continuous pouring action or movement. The repeated p p p p p creates a repeated pouring sound. These words are repeated to show that the liquid is starting to overflow. The glass is already filled and the person is still over uh, is still filling the glass, so it's overflowing. Therefore, the poet has used the p word repeatedly. The onomatopoeia used in the poem are gurgle, splish, splash, fizzy, wheezy, plink, hiss. Onomatopoeia means the sound that is being produced. So here they are trying to produce the pouring sound. So when you want to express like as if sound, as if there is like a sound of the pouring water, then you use words like gurgle, gurgle, splash, splash, fizzy, wheezy, okay? So this is what we understand as onomatopoeia. The rhyming words used in the poem is drop, pop, top, stop. The rhyming pattern of the poem is A, B, C, B for the first part of the poem, okay? 
We have already learned about onomatopoeia and the rhyming words and pattern in the first part of the video, right? So now it is up to you to find out the rhyming scheme and the pattern, okay? With this, we come to an end for this particular unit. I hope you have learned something new about poems and the different poetic technique used in poems. Thank you and stay safe.